before you are liberated, which is the first step in the process, right? You feel unclear, you know, yeah. you feel like you don't have clarity on what your purpose is. You may find yourself overcompensating, overdoing, manipulating, um, find yourself feeling stuck. A lot of psychologists believe that by the time you're six, that belief system is set. Welcome to another delightful, delicious episode of Yummy Podcast, where we savor life's inspiring stories on a journey to help you find your ultimate, most meaningful yet. I'm Crystal Khalil. And I'm Dr. Nicola Beach. Hmm. Yummy. <laughs> Do you remember how we got to the point of understanding that YUMMY was an acronym because it is an acronym. It stands for your ultimate, most meaningful yet. Yeah. Do you remember how long we thought that YUMMY was just a word? Yeah, we used to say <laughs> YUMMY just to describe anything good, right? right? Like, you know, you ever had something so good that you, the, the best way to describe it is it's YUMMY. It's, it's so YUMMY. And like when even life moments, right. when God would surprise and delight us with little things, we'd go, oh my God, that's so YUMMY. And we said it so often. And then one day it was like we were sitting at the table I was like, you know what? I think yummy's an, an acronym. acronym. And I think you said, no, I said. Yeah, you came up with the first yeah, I two. I said, your ultimate, most, and you said, meaningful, yeah. And we were like, yeah! You ever had one of those moments where everything just kind of comes together? That's what happened to us with yummy. Yeah. But I think it was more than just coming up with and understanding the acronym, right. right? I think we both got to a point where we were living the yummy. Yeah. And then all of the pieces started coming together to let us know what it was. As we were activating boundaries in our own lives, advocating for ourselves, trimming down the fat on people pleasing and yeah. living everybody else's expectations yeah. and going for what we felt we were called to. Yeah. that acronym became more and more relevant. I don't think a year before we got it, I don't think we could have gotten it. No, no. In fact, the more and more we described um, our avatar, the woman we serve. So yeah. we serve both men and women in executive coaching, change management, organizational development. We have a business called Volition Enterprises. But we also have a business called Sister Diamonds. And with Sister Diamonds, we serve a woman much like ourselves right. who is the one who everybody calls when they need help, but she doesn't really know who to call when she needs help. She is the walking, living, breathing Olivia Pope Absolutely. for work, for family, for the community. She is the high achiever who's achieved a certain amount of success and realized you can't achieve happy. That was me. Yeah, that was me. That was me. I was living, I like to say, in a golden cage. I was going to work every day. I had a great job. It was a J-O-B. Uh, I uh, with great perks and great benefits. I had the houses, the cars, the trinkets, the trash, the travel, all the things you could imagine. But I felt like I wasn't living my ultimate, most meaningful yet. Yeah. I was doing a lot of great things, a lot of amazing things. Anybody looking at me would say, oh, she's got an amazing life. But I knew that I wasn't living up to my full potential. I knew God was calling me for more. Yeah. And one day, you know, I told you this since I was on, I'd gone to South Africa. I was on the top of Table Mountain with some friends and it was the closest I ever felt to God. I'm looking out and I'm like, I've got, he's got to hear me now. If he's never heard me before, he has got to hear me now because I am literally in the clouds. It was just so beautiful. So we decided to pray. And I heard my soul say, God, I want to travel the world, 
serve your people and not worry about resources. Mm -hmm. When you say go left, I want to be able to go left. When you say go right, I want to be able to go right. And I don't want to have to fill out a vacation slip and I don't want to uh, get anybody else's permission for what you are calling me to do. And I actually heard my soul say it. My brain was like, what? How are you going to do that? <laughs> right. How are you going to do that? Right. Because you've got responsibilities with a capital R and you've got this job. So how are you going to do that? And right now that was so gosh, sis, that was probably eight years ago. Yeah. And right now I am actually living in that, which is my ultimate, most meaningful yet. Yeah. It's such a blessing um, to be able to recognize it. You know, you and I talk a lot about our journey. You know, for me, I lost everything. Mm. I mean, everything. I had the ultimate locust experience. When I talk to people about it, I'm like, there was no grass. There were no trees. There weren't dead flowers. It just was scorched earth everywhere. And I was like, God, you know, for not that you owe me anything, because you don't owe me anything. And I know I can't earn my way into, you know, heaven, but could you have gone a little lighter on me on this one? Because I feel like I'm out here by myself now. Yeah. I've lost house, cars, you know, all of the stuff is gone and I'm alone. And me and God are having this conversation and I was just like, so this is what you do? You leave me by myself? And he's mm -hmm. like, well, if you're by yourself, who are you talking to? And who's talking back to you? I was like, oh, point <laughs> for Jesus. Okay, so you're going to fix this? Like, yeah. it's to ruin for you to fix it? All right, let me see how that plays out. And I remember when I recognized Part of my yummy experience is the farm that I live on. Now, I don't do animals, <laughs> not like that, but I live on a farm with a barn and the storybook red barn and all of that. And I remember him saying to me, the next time you have a home, it's going to be a ministry. Mm. It's going to minister to everybody that comes into it. I was like, now if that's the reason I lost the one that I had. I'd be okay with that, but yeah. I got to see it to yeah. believe it. And one of the yummy aspects of my life is being able to see how I went from below zero mm. to this elevated experience where I laugh. Because, you know, when people come to my house, they're like, man, it's something about your house, Doc. Mm -hmm. It just feels like a big old hug. And I want to say to them, Oh, you know, this is my blessed experience. This is a part of my yummy. So yeah. I think there was a point in our lives where we we couldn't really understand the difference between good, mm -hmm. a hookup, mm -hmm. that's dope, and this is yummy. Like yeah. this is a carve out. This is something yeah. different. So us being able to do this podcast now and give people the opportunity to hear other people's yummy, their lessons, their moments of insight, their revelation, their their victories, and the stuff where they're just like, yeah, I jacked that up. So sis, as you're talking about a free mindset, yeah. you know it's opportunity for swag. Swag Yummy check. swag. Our shirts today say free women. Free women. You get it? Free, free women, women. Free women. women. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> Carry on. Continue. So continue. You can get your free women, free women t-shirt at crystalanddrnicole.com or you can check the show notes below to find the link. Yeah. And it's you know, crazy. Getting to the yummy is a process, right? It, it is getting to the yummy is a serious process. And I think one of the most profound journeys in our business together has been understanding how we got to the yummy yeah. and how to teach it to other people. Yes. So when we got together, we realized that 
um, we had been through a similar trajectory, right? Both of us had the locust experience. We both worked in corporate America. We both took the leap. Um, Just sharing some different traumas, some different things that we've experienced in our families and also the highs, the different things. We both achieved a lot of amazing things. Like you are dope all by yourself. I'm dope all by myself, right? But But together, we are brilliant. And so coming together, we realized that there was a process. Mm -hmm. And so we call that our yummy methodology. Tell them a little bit about our yummy methodology, sis. So liberation, activation, acceleration. Three steps. Three steps. What we realized was a lot of what was happening in our lives was an invitation Mm -hmm. to change our mindset. We use the word mindset without really thinking about the fact that it's where is your mind set? set. Yeah. Where's the dial on that thing called your mind? Is it free? Is it bound? Is it filled with trauma, drama, stuff that you inherited from folks that have been holding you down, but you've never done anything to release yourself from it? Where is your mind on the things that are most critical? And what happens when you move from being bound Mm -hmm. to being unleashed and liberated? And, you know, before you are liberated, which is the first step in the process, right? You feel unclear. You know, you feel like you don't have clarity on what your purpose is. You may find yourself overcompensating, overdoing, manipulating, um, find yourself feeling stuck. We say all the time, are you stuck or refusing to move? You may feel like you're a little stuck in some areas and it may not be bad areas. Like I said, my cage was gold. My cage was with gold a swing. with a swing. I had and purple. I had, I had pink feathers in there, Yay. and they would bring me premium food <laughs> and water. We were just talking about water before right. the segment, right? They were bringing me that good water and some premium food. So my cage was nice, but I was still stuck, right? right? So before you get liberated, you have some mindsets to your point and some belief systems yeah. that are not serving you. So if you think about it, you've got your 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 conscious mind and your subconscious mind, right? Your subconscious mind is made up of beliefs that you inherited yep. um, from your circle of influence, people who may have loved you well, but passed on and donated and <laughs> and lent you some limiting beliefs um, that people in your family, your community, maybe even your church, right? Um, maybe even just the geography of where you were raised, those things contribute to your belief system. Yeah. And your belief system drives your decision-making. So you have your conscious mind where you think, you know, what are you what are you currently thinking? We don't understand how much that conscious mind Drives. is influenced by the belief system. Yep. And your belief system is powerful. It's so powerful that people strap bombs on themselves and blow up communities, right? Because of what they believe. That yeah. belief system is no joke. And and a lot of psychologists believe that by the time you're six. That belief system is set, Mm -hmm. right? So you think about church, school, like you said, geography, different family dynamics that are shaping you into how you perceive adversity, Mm -hmm. how you perceive bouncing back, what you believe you're worth, what you believe is, is good and whole and valuable. So much of that is being formed by such a young age. And what Crystal and I found out was when we were comparing notes, there were times where we were like, yeah, my six-year-old self drives these (laughs) 
decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I look at the decisions in this lane, she is propped up on 10 pillows, no driver's license. And she is driving my decisions because I haven't gotten to the point where I've said limited beliefs. Yeah. Acting out in how you make decisions. Let me put you behind me or put you in the back seat with a blanket. Mm -hmm. Let me take over now. I have a new understanding of how to do this. I have a new understanding of what's going to free us all to do what we need to do. So we have that stuff. And one of the things that we talked about was how much of that, even though at times it's given with the best of intentions, Mm -hmm. conditions us to sabotage ourselves. We don't even really know that yeah. that's what it's doing, oh. but it's putting a premature ceiling on what's possible, which is the yummy. Hi, I'm Crystal Khalil. And I'm Dr. Nicole LaBeach. Are you the woman that is serving everyone else? You know, you're the one that everybody calls when they have an issue. You're serving in the community, at work, at home, but you're not quite sure who's there for you. Listen, if you know that there's more, you've been feeling that, and you want to move into your next with purpose, you need to join us at Woman Unlimited Live. We help high-achieving women like yourself unbind and unleash their unlimited potential. So this is your time, and we look forward to seeing you. See you soon. See you soon. Listen, when I was trying to figure out um, what my yummy life was, what my yummy career was, my belief system, my mindset was drawing on the wisdom of my parents that were very uh, good, hardworking, salt of the earth people, People. but they taught me you got to work twice as hard to get half. Yep. They taught me to get a good job, stay there till retirement, right? And 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 then live on on social security and pension, right? They they taught me that um you know, I had to be loyal to these companies even though the landscape has changed in corporate America. The gra- they, they taught me the grass is not always greener on the other side. So I was that worker. I was that person that was dedicated, hardworking, um, committed to excellence and could not see myself as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Right. Because I was taught to be a worker and we don't often realize how those things impact us and impact our decisions. And it keeps us bound because when you are when you're operating from a place of fear, When you're operating from a place of lack, you are bound. You are not free. You're not free to truly live your yummy life. So that's the first step. We, you know, we teach in our yummy methodology how to unbind and unleash your unlimited potential by liberating your mind from those belief systems and structures and processes that no longer serve you. And it's important because to move from liberation to activation, some things have to be tweaked and changed. So being able to recognize that we could help people see some of the invitations to revert all the way back to the limiting belief that's not serving them and push past the fear was really critical for me when we started talking about how can we teach others how to do this, that it was done with a sense of humility, a sense of grit, yeah, a sense of understanding that, you know, it it's not about ego and being bigger than life. That's not what the yummy is about at all. But the idea that when you are bound, the people that are waiting for you to show up, they're waiting for you to move in purpose. 
They're waiting for you to move on purpose, that they're just waiting. Mm -hmm. And time is the major commodity that we cannot control Mm -hmm. was huge. It was like, listen, part of living our yummy life is moving in purpose. And when we're not living that, there are folks that are like, I am waiting on you to decide that you're worthy enough to move in your calling so that I can receive from you what's going to help me move along on my journey. Mm -hmm. Time is is the only thing you don't get more of. You can make money, right? Right. You cannot make time. Well, we've talked about the fact that that money is not the only currency. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did y'all hear that? Money Money is not the not the only currency. Yeah. And when you think money is the only currency, you miss out on all of the other things that have you bound because you don't understand their value and how it all comes together in the yummy life. Absolutely. So once you get free, right now, you've got a free mind and you start to dream. You start to have vision. You start to think about, well, who am I uninterrupted? Yeah. Without all of these limited belief systems. And then you're ready to start taking action and something happens. The minute you start taking action towards your yummy life, self-sabotage kicks in. It's just like, you know, you ever, (laughs) if you've ever flown on a plane, most of the time they're on autopilot, right? If that plane starts to lose altitude or gain altitude, autopilot will bring it back into the the safe zone where the, the level they want it to fly at. Our minds do the same thing. Yep. Our belief systems do the same thing to us. The minute we start to think and do things different than what our belief set, our belief system says, it starts to autopilot us by self-sabotaging. Yeah. And we begin to self-betray. And if that's not bad enough, most of the time we are surrounded by a community that has similar belief systems. So if you sabotaging yourself is not enough, we will turn to and look for help from people who have the same limiting belief system and then they sabotage us. Right. And they don't mean to. So so here's the thing. Yeah, there are people that are haters. There are people that they, they want to rain on your parade at every cost and they just don't have good intentions towards you. But they're the minority yeah. when it comes to access. Most of the people that are um, in your inner circle are people that are family, friendships. They've got good intentions towards you because they're close. And what we've noticed is first problem is often their mindset is so similar to yours that the things you're afraid of, they're afraid of. Mm -hmm. Second of all, if they don't have responsibility connected to their access to you, that ownership of, you know what, if she says that's the vision, let me encourage and support. Let me not judge and diminish because part of my responsibility is to hold her up, hold him up for them to take their journey. If they don't have responsibility in the fact that they access you, you'll be in a bit of trouble. If there are what you would consider to be failures, we consider them to be practice. We're like, listen, you got to build these muscles one way or another to this yummy life. So if it didn't work out the first time, that is no true indication that it won't work out this time. Mm -hmm. But if your memory is of the things that have not worked versus the things that need to be tweaked to get to that next, that activation piece can feel like a climb, but it's so necessary. And see, most of our clients come in and it's, they are the highest in the class, right? frankly put, right? They are the one everybody else calls for solutions. So they can't, they can't ask the people around them for help because they are the help. They are the ones that if you call and you say you need something, they're going to do the Google search. They're going to drive 
20 miles to go pick it up. They're going to be there on time. They're going to be there when it closes. They are going to support you, but they don't have that type of support. So the first step is liberation, freeing your mind so that you can take the necessary steps to get into action towards your vision. The third, the second step is activation, actually doing it and doing it consistently until you start to create good habits and you start to see some wins and you start to believe this could work, right? And you start to learn some lessons and put things into practice. And the third step is acceleration. Now, acceleration happens when you connect with other like-minded people that have either been where you are and can tell you how to get there or they are on the same journey with you and they're gonna cheer for you, they're gonna support you and you have that community. Yeah, That is the most critical piece of what we do, I believe, sis. It's the, the, the community that drives the acceleration of the vision. Yeah. Because with that community, you're talking about destiny helpers. Yeah. You're talking about mentors, coaches, therapists, friends, sister circles. Yeah. You know, the, the man cave circle, what, whatever that is to you, it's it's that board of advisors. It's that mirrored reflection that says to you, I don't see anything bad in you. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything in you that can't go for this. So go for it, go afraid. Yeah. And you know what, as you're going afraid, I've got a whole uh, Rolodex, old word, of connections that I'm willing to avail to you in this process. I've got a whole group of people that I'm willing to introduce you to. I'm willing to make calls for you. I'm willing to support you in this yummy part of your journey. That piece is a game changer. It's a game changer. It changed my life. Yeah. Because when I started uh, feeling like I needed to make a change. I started questioning what's next for me, what's next in my life. I invested in a coach. I invested in myself. I actually went to my company and asked them to reimburse me and they said that they didn't believe in it. And so I invested in myself because I realized that I am the guarantee, number one. And when I leave, All of my knowledge, experience, everything goes with me. I don't leave it behind. So I said, I'm going to invest in myself. I invested in a coach. And we sat down and we created a three-year plan for me to exit corporate America. But that accelerated me so much, I was able to execute that in two years. The process of investing in myself accelerated my three-year plan to two years. Because once I saw the benefit of the executive coach and I realized that I wanted this platform, then I invested in a speaking coach. Right. Then I invested in a business coach, right? I mean, I started investing in myself. I mean, look, anybody who you see that is successful has a team of coaches and people surrounding them that are helping them. I mean, last count, I think Tiger Woods had nine. Right. Nine coaches, right? Every CEO, Fortune 500 CEO is being coached by somebody or some bodies. So the question you have to ask yourself is, who is my team and what am I doing to invest in the guarantee, which is me? Because every dollar that I put into myself was multiplied back. So when you invest in yourself, you get a guaranteed return on your investment. We invest in a lot of things, y'all. I had all the trinkets in the trash, the cars, the purses, the bags, the shoes. I traveled. I had all the badges of honor. But those things did not give me a return on my investment. And it doesn't help you to recognize that you are the solution that you've been looking for. Yeah. We often are looking outside of ourselves to to see what can I what can I do here Mm -hmm. to make this happen? What can I do there to make that happen? And yes, there's a doing part of this. 
But there's a being part of it. Who you be. Not good English, but there's a being part of the yummy life, the yummy experience where you recognize, you know, a lot of the things that I that I'm experiencing that I don't feel are living my best yummy life. I'm the solution that can turn those things around. I just may not have all of the tools in order to turn it around. And quite frankly, bubble gum and the back of a shoe is not going to fix everything. So at some point you stop and you say, you know what? Whatever is in this mindset that I have doesn't have to be bad, but it's not going to help me get there. Yeah. So let me start to figure out who, what, when, where, the, the people, places, and things that can help me to shift my mindset so I can shift the decisions and the actions that I'm activating and start to attract people that can move me further along and resources that can move me into the experience that I believe that I deserve. I love that. So we invite you all to join us on this yummy journey. Yes. This yummy journey to discover your ultimate, most meaningful yet. And as we ask our guests, we'll ask you, what yummy life awaits you.